Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about Iconic Masters and why Iconic Masters is such a gamble in terms of value. Now, right off the bat, a booster pack will cost $10. $10. So it's already quite a big investment for most Magic players. If you wanted to draft this set, it would probably cost you $30 or more, depending on the price support. Now the cards, some of them are very good and some of them are very bad. And typical of a master set, you will have your value and then you'll have cards that are worth 25 cents, 50 cents as rares. And that's the good part about this set. The valuable cards are rares. Yes, you have very good mythics and yes, you have the most expensive cards, or most expensive card mana drain being at mythic, but you have a ton of value in the rare slots. But there's also a ton of crap. So it becomes a giant lottery ticket and it's a $10 lottery ticket and sometimes you can come out ahead and then sometimes you come behind. So for $10, you can either win $50 or you can lose all $10 pretty much on the scratch ticket. And Magic has become more and more of this type of gambling model uh, the masterpieces were a very well before the masterpieces there were mythics right the mythics were a interesting way because the mythics were stronger than most cards and it would take four of them to it would take four jc mind sculptors at a hundred plus dollars to make your okay deck and if you played a deck with jaces that and your deck did not have jaces you would lose the game i remembered that very well and then he got banned. I mean, the card was so good, it got banned, and it was a mythic in the last set of the block, so not much of it was opened. The price was just too much, in my opinion, and they banned it because it was that good. So you have a situation where we're looking at three of the more expensive rares, and then we'll look at three of the cheaper rares, where it's Feast or Famine. And Magic was not always this way. Magic was, I don't know how to put it this way, but in since I've been playing since beta, where Magic didn't have value back then. They just didn't. You might be like, oh, Black Lotus was $20. Yes, it was $20, and that's great. But $20 was the Pokemon movie, right? So, okay, would you rather have a Pokemon movie or a Black Lotus? Magic was not as popular as it is today, and the card values were not... No one knew what they were worth. And then occasionally, Inquest Magazine would once a month update everyone on the worth of the card. Now everyone knows what the cards are worth. Smartphones, huge data plans, and just unlimited data plans, and the fact that we have internet, like, all the time. There is not a mystery as, hmm, I'm buying this $10 pack. I wonder what cards are in it. When I bought my beta packs in my unlimited, I didn't even know what was in it. So let's take a look at a few of these cards. Hypersonic Dragon, this is not actually a dollar. It's actually like 25 cents. Um, this is the model. Uh, reminds me a lot of Fire Emblem Gacha game where it's not pay to win, but it's pay to get what you want in terms of a collection. And this is what Magic of Gathering has become. It's become more expensive. And just even... So yeah, you have inflation. I'm not going to talk about too much about inflation. Yes, packs were not $4 back then. I think it was like free 15 or two ninety nine, something like that, when I played Magic in the beginning. But... A pack doesn't become $10 overnight. There has to be something in that pack to make it worth the risk of getting a 25 cent card. And there are many 25 cent cards in, in that you can get. So we have a situation where as time moves on, you're spending more money. And yes, the cards you're getting are better. The cards potentially you are going to get are better. But you're spending more money and your collections being overall diluted 
this is a player's game. A lot of you get confused of what I mean by that. So I'll be very clear as to my definition because I don't want you guys to be confused anymore. I have a good collection of magic cards. I will keep my EDH cards. I will keep the cards that have value for me. If Fileware was reprinted, that is the card I want them to reprint. Although I own hundreds of copies of her because I would love to own hundreds more. And to me, it will always have value. A lot of my Fileware are actually altered. I don't know if you know that, but a lot of them have uh, designs. A lot of them are extended. So I don't reprint. Okay, they reprinted Fileware. That's great. I can get more alters is my would be my reaction so as a collector i'm glad that they are reprinting stuff so more people can play the game as someone who as a player i'm very glad that they're doing so but i don't want to own so Philia, uh, i like love her but i love her regardless of her value same goes with malera same with stoneforge i would be lying to you if I didn't realize the writing is on the wall for any car not on the reserve list, it will be reprinted. Um, it was impossible to think Mana Drain, Force of Will, all these cards, Wasteland, all of them would be reprinted even five years ago. And especially before the first Modern Masters came out, or even after the first Modern Masters came out, you were like, wait a second, the prices out of these cards have gone up. Mm, not good sign. So we're in, a, we're in a scenario where the secondary market will eventually become Wizards of the Coast. They will have full control over the card prices, and they currently do. If they think a card price is too high, then they just reprint it. Well, still too high, we're going to keep reprinting it. And you look at Tomogoyf, that's a very good example of some a card that was always over $100 being reprinted until it was under $100. And I'm pretty sure that was their goal was to make it under $100. The same with the Zen Car Fetch Lands, the same with the Onslaught Fetch Lands, which previous to reprinting were very expensive. Polluted was over 100 I know a lot of you don't remember that, but that was the case. So at the very end of the day, uh, you, my advice would be do not own more than four copies of a card unless you are willing to take a hit because that hit is going to come soon. And I cannot tell if it's tomorrow or a month from now, but I can tell you that the Master Series will continue on. And enjoy the game. Just enjoy the game. I know a lot of you view this as an MTG Finance channel, and that would probably be my best financial advice to you is sell it when it goes up slightly, but don't hold it. Don't be greedy and don't hold 500 copies of a card and hope that it goes up in price because even if it does go up in price then it becomes a very juicy target for another master series i i mean a for vials here and i actually need a for vials because they're just incredibly expensive and very difficult to get hold of so anyway that is it oh and obviously the one i needed the most uh, was the grove of the burn i actually really want that card anyway that is it bye guys